With us now is Fran Capo, our adventure correspondent, and also one of my dearest best friends in the whole world. Hello, Fran. How are you? I'm doing great, Donna. You know I am always looking for the next adventure in life because yes. that's the way I live. And I've dragged you on a bunch of adventures, and you loved it. <laughs> so. Many, many, many. In our last 20 years of friendship, it's been um, really great. And it's how we create memories. Yes, right? that's the thing is if every day is the same. And that's why I do adventures because people go, what are you doing? I, I actually said to someone who I haven't seen in 10 years, what's new? He said nothing, and he meant it. And I was like, okay, that is really scary. <laughs> but so I'm here in, in New York for a while, and I just started to do some New York adventures. So Donna, I found this adventure. It's called The Edge. Okay. Okay. And it's uh, down by Hudson Yards. And it's, okay, it's a 110-story building. But I found a really interesting thing. I actually spoke to a guy who built that building. He goes, you know, it's a marketing ploy that there are really not the amount of stories in a building that a lot of buildings say. They say they're higher. They do it by feet. And then they divide how many stories it would be. So what you do is they have where you could go out. And in the Western Hemisphere, it's the, the tallest ascent from the Western Hemisphere that you lean over. But they have two degrees. You could go out on the 100th floor, look out, stand on a glass um, like you did at the, the Vanderbilt, I think. Stand out on the glass and the edges lean over so you feel like you're leaning over. Um, but you're secure. You know, if there's glass underneath, unless you weigh, you know, like 10,000 pounds, it's going to break. You're fine. But I did the one where you go to the 100th floor, you're strapped in. They make you do a breathalyzer test. First time in my wow. life I ever had to do a breathalyzer test. And um, you have to, you can't be higher than six feet and you can't be, uh, you can't weigh over a certain amount of pounds, right? They have a scale that actually just says pass or fail, which is actually pretty funny. I like a scale like that. You pass, you fail. Okay, in other words. Wait, it's it, like Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory. Good egg yeah, or bad right, exactly. egg? Exactly. <laughs> you get dripped down and you get zoomed out. And <laughs> so I, I said, I want that scale. But anyway, they weigh you, they, they measure how tall you are, they put you in a suit, they give you a breathalyzer test, and then they suit you up. And they take, when I say they take everything off of you, you can't now wear a ring, you can't wear, a, somebody had a nose ring, they had to take it off. Really? You have to put your hair up in a bun. They want nothing falling over. Now, I had a cape. I actually wanted to wear a cape at the top of the building, but they wouldn't let you. So then you're strapped in. But here's an interesting thing. They put those ties, you know, those, uh, those uh, uh, ties that you uh, stick oh, yeah, out, zip, the, yeah, the, the zip, zip ties, ties right? Zip ties. Mm -hmm. And I said, why are you doing it? And right. he said, so no one can do anything nefarious. Like uh, when you're going there, that no one can clip it. So not only are you in it, because a, a bunch of people and the, and the building next door called The Vessel right. committed suicide there. Okay. So they want to make sure nobody's thinking of anything crazy. They zip you up. You're attached the whole time. You step out onto this platform on the 100th floor. And then they have you look over the edge, holding onto the rope. Then you climb a set of stairs to the 110th floor. The stairs are uneven because supposedly that gives you better balance of not feeling like you're going to fall. So one foot, one step is high, one step is low, one step is high, one step is low. And I was like, why did, why did they do that? They said it has a whole thing with psychologically how you feel like you're not tipping over it than if you stepped up regularly. You get to the 110th floor. They tell you it can hold 10,000 pounds. The first thing they say, so if you're at the edge of a building, they say lean forward. I go, I'd rather lean backwards first so I don't see. No, you lean forward right. and you have to trust because it's all about trust. You're okay. at the very edge and they tell you to like put your chest out and look down. Now, what's funny is they have a helmet. Honestly, okay. is the helmet going to help you if you fall? No. I don't think so. You know? <laughs> oh, good. My brain was in one piece. The, the arms and legs everywhere else. But And so, <laughs> so you do that, and then they... You have you turn around and then you lean backwards, which is the picture that's up there. You lean backwards off the building and they go, go further back, further back. I swear my feet felt like it was like, I go, what if your feet slip? No, oh, don't worry. The rope's holding you. And I'm having this image dangling. But it was so much fun. And, and they, you're used to adventures. I'm I used wonder to how adventures. some people that have never done anything exciting like that in their life are able to handle it. Well, see, because at least you had that expertise. Yes. And here's the thing, though. It's very interesting because guys skydive, which is a lot higher than a building. Mm -hmm. But skydiving, when you jump out of the plane, you're looking at clouds. There's nothing to give you a perspective. When you're there, you see how high you are above you're the like, other buildings. You're like, there's a taxi cab. Yeah, right, exactly. That tiny little dot over there could be me if I slipped. But, but 
I, I did get a little nervous, but of course you do it. But I did bring a friend of mine's Hence daughter. adrenaline adventure. Exactly. If there's no adrenaline, then what's the point? Well, yeah, what's the adventure? I, exactly. exactly. And so I brought um, my friend Dawn's daughter, Jackie, and my friend Barbara Noyes came with me. She's a police officer. I'm like, this is not the union. She's you walk in a bit. Yeah. But my friend's daughter had never done it. And so she did it, and she was so proud of herself. And they give you a medal afterwards, and you take photos and everything. So that was the first adventure. So you can do the calm way, stay on the glass. Okay. Okay. Or you could do going over the edge. Got it. So those are the two. The edge. And then the edge. It's called the edge. Now, did you and book it online? Is that the best way to like? You, you have to have advanced tickets. You have to buy advanced tickets, okay. and they give you time slots. Great. Uh, because it's two hours for each group, maximum eight people in a group, because they want to make sure they can handle it. They check you five, six, seven times. Are you sure it's in? Are you sure it's in? Tight. And they do it very tight so you feel secure in the harness. Um, because that feeling of slack, which I've done uh, adventures where they have that, then it makes you not feel secure if you don't feel the harness tight on you. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the one adventure. That was cool. And then we went, then the second adventure uh, is this thing called uh, rail, uh, now bike railing. Okay. okay. Rail, I'm sorry, rail biking. Oops, and I got dyslexic That's okay. there for a second. Rail biking. And what it is, they have five locations throughout the United States. I went to the one in Phoenicia, which is in the Catskills. And it's a pedaled electric bike. So you go eight miles round trip, but you're on an abandoned railroad track. Fun. So you could do it. There's cars with four people. There's cars with two people. If you bring six people, they'll attach your car. So in the back, somebody, nothing with hands. In the back, there's someone that uh, controls the brake. And you start pedaling. And then, to be honest, on the way there, because it's a little bit of an angle, you just see the beautiful everything around. You go over like, bridges. Da, yeah, da, exactly. Da, da, da. Da. Oh, I'm just pedaling. I'll <laughs> pedal a little and catch up. You don't want to hit the person in front of you because obviously on a railroad track, you can't pass them. And on the way back, they have a machine that turns it around. Now it's a little bit of an uphill. But since it's an electric bike, it's an assist, and it, and it works out really well. You know, you just got to keep pedaling, 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 because you don't want the people behind you to go, hey, slow pokes here. The funny thing is, I had done this once before with Steve and my son Spence and, and Heather, and I said, hey, do these bikes ever fall off the trail? They go, no, they don't fall off. Well, uh, yeah. 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 And Steve <laughs> was sitting, and he, we're pedaling, and Steve just went like this, like to move, and it popped off. I went... Well, good. We're on the bridge now. And they tell you, <laughs> don't get off. And, and I was like, well, um, we could sit here and wait. How's the guy going to get around? He can't get around the other car. So we all just kind of looked, picked the bike up, put it back on. We went to the front and we went, so this bike never comes off. They go, no. We go, well, it did. And they said, you get a free shirt. So I'm not advising people to try to get free shirts. Just to get the free shirt. Yeah, right. exactly. Because, um, but it is actually very relaxing. It's good it exercise. Like fun. It's so much fun. And what they're trying to do, which is really cool, they have five locations. Um, they have one in Iowa. They have one in Las Vegas. But they're trying to raise five hundred million dollars okay. to connect these rail cars. From New York to California, so you could actually connect all the trails and go oh. cross country, which would be really cool. Like if you stayed at a little bed and breakfast place yeah. or something, as you did it, stop, do it, continue bike ride. Imagine bike riding across America. I would, I would, yeah, exactly. I would it do reminds that. me. It reminds me of being in the singing group when I was a kid, and we did the hands across America. Oh, you did that? Oh, I sang that. Yeah, yeah. it was part of all that. that but it kind of reminds me of that, like that community, like you could sponsor a mile. That, exactly. Right. That would be really So each cool. person could sponsor, right? And so, raise money for correct. something. So this Lions group sponsored, the Rotary sponsored, and then you could have like a little tag that says sponsored by. Exactly. All right, I'm calling them right after this. Segment. Right after I'm this. Like, well, it, uh, okay. Donna Drake Listen, here with I a marketing have, idea. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, you know, just be a sponsor on my show and I'll sponsor yours. But you know what? It's funny that you say that. I wasn't going to talk about this, but um, every August, the Wolf Conservatory has this thing called Run Like a Wolf. And what they do is they tag a wolf in Yellowstone Park. And wolves run like 30, mi 30 miles a day. All right, I'm not running 30 miles a day. But they ask you to do 100 miles during the month of August. I've already done 144 miles this month. Nice. And what you do is, you know, you pay them 50 bucks and you try to do the 100 miles. But it's that feeling that you're doing something yeah, you're good and that competitive thing. Uh, so I'm actually number 19 out of 730 people. Wow. So, yeah, because of, of the miles. But wow. anyway, when you go rail biking, 
There is a place only one mile away, and it's the world's largest kaleidoscope. Oh. It was made out of an old silo grain, um, you know, warehouse. And you lay on the ground and you see the kaleidoscope up. It's in Tempe, New York. And it's right near I have the a, I have not done that one yet. Okay. It's, you I, would that's love it. on my list. I know because yeah. kaleidoscopes were my always my favorite toy. But there also used to be a toy, and I don't, it's like an inexpensive kaleidoscope. I don't know what it's called. We'll have to have people write in. But instead of like the kaleidoscope, which you turn, right. Right, this thing you would just shake. You'd shake it up. And then you'd hold your light up. You'd hold it up. You'd get it at the carnival. Is it the one and that it has like, like little pieces things inside? Inside of it. Yeah. 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 What is that called? It's, it's probably be, a cheap kaleidoscope. A, a That's cheap, what it's called. <laughs> it's, 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 what is that thing? Cheap, cheap kaleidoscope. Doesn't actually yeah. make a Disposable picture. Disposable kaleidoscopes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, at this place, then, of course, oh. they always have the gift shop, and they sell, and some of these things are amazing, but very expensive, but gorgeous. Do you own a that. telescope? Yes, I do. I do, too, but I haven't, yeah. like, set mine up in a long time. We had it when but, we lived here in Putnam. Now that okay. we live in Florida, we haven't set it up. But, yeah, because sometimes the night skies, when there's no light pollution, are gorgeous. And I yeah. do miss that. Like living yeah. on Long Island, there is so much light pollution that you actually yeah. have to drive upstate or you have to, like Pennsylvania has a beautiful oh. night sky. Yeah. You know, you look up and you're like, oh, those are stars. You know, like you miss them. It was like, whoa. And the best is like, I remember saying one time I was, uh, I was talking to a friend on the phone and I was looking up at the night sky and I said, the only thing that can make this better is a shooting star. And just at the moment I said it, yeah. a shooting star went, Oh, what are the odds of that happening? But see, this is the thing. You know this. There are ventures everywhere you turn. You know, I could see a road and go, oh, what's that? And get off the road, go and explore something I didn't even know was there. And I really believe that that's what life's about. Mm -hmm. And that's what I talk about, like, in my TEDx talks and in my motivational talks. Bring because, a canteen yeah. and be an explorer. Yes, Yes, you know, bring a little bug spray in case yeah. you get lost somewhere, maybe a, maybe a compass just in case somebody needs to find you. <laughs> but that's that's the whole thing about life. And You know what? I have an idea. Speaking about living it up, what if we created a box? I always wanted to do like live it up in a party and have okay. a party box, but maybe we could have like a box product where it has some of those little things in it. Adventures you know, to do? Yes. That like in a cool. box. And you could subscribe to like the live it up box. These are ways that you could live it up. It, you know, an adventure with Donna and Fran. We could put like a little quote in there. Like some of the things we're already For them, doing they our have life. To, right, yeah. to challenge people to do that. And the thing is they have to, once they put their hand in the box or whatever way they do it, right. they have to agree no matter what that they do it. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Yes. <laughs> okay. and, and this is how we live our life. We consistently are joking around with each other, coming up with ideas. You should hear our phone calls sometimes. Maybe we should just record a phone call. Yeah, right. <laughs> I am Donna Drake. I am Fran Capo. Enjoy your journey. Be well.